In the Haymaker's most recent video, we talked about the biggest moments in wrestling history. We talked about the moments that filled us with the biggest amounts of just euphoria and happiness. And oh my God, they they pulled off this great storyline and about how certain promotions were able to make the, their big moments super amazing. This week, we're going to talk about the other side. We're going to talk about the other part of wrestling storytelling, the parts where they go, Hmm, somebody in the writing department may may not have had a job after this little, little debacle. So here we go. This week, we're talking about the worst payoffs in WWE and WCW history. Hello, everybody. My name is Nikki V, MLP, and joining me today, we have these two assholes. That's how That's every new. intro is happening from now on. Yeah, Pretty we got, much. We got all of something them. to mix up the monotony of these intros. Yeah. I'm DJ Calcos. That's Tomb Critical 2K. That's Nikki V M O P. Let's get started. Yeah, let's talk about shitty wrestling. Uh, there's, the, there's, the, there's the guy that obsesses over Rob Van Dam. There's the guy who thinks he's so cool because he has his big old pot of coffee. And then there's this asshole with the top hat. <laughs> Calcos, actually, I'm curious. Do you have like a giant ass pot of coffee next to you every time you record? You should see the size of my mug. It is a very <laughs> large mug with a rainbow flag on it that says nobody knows I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Christmas present from my brother, and it's my favorite cup. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. I was not expecting it to go that way. I was just kidding. but OK. <laughs> <laughs> you you brought that home in an amazing way, and I, I, I slowly clap for that. Well done, well done. You paid that off brilliantly. Unlike these fucking storylines that couldn't pay off shit, couldn't pay off a fucking $2 IOU. Why don't we get started? All, All right. right. Let's play a little word association. Okay, the Bella Twins. Horrible, shitty, the worst ever. Awful, yeah. terrible. Basically everything Nikki V said. Okay, we need a thesaurus, because there's like, there's so many words that you can use to describe the Bella Twins uh, job. When, it, when it comes to <laughs> this angle, and not a single one of them is positive. You know exactly what angle we're talking about. It's their rivalry. Yes, their rivalry, their little family feud that they had going on. Okay, let me just bring you guys back. Um... A little while ago. This is still fresh. You know, the wound's still a little bit of fresh in here. Let me pour some salt in it to remind you of how bad this is. Okay. So we have um, Daniel Bryan at the time. He's injured. He can't really do anything. And Brie Bella manages to insert herself into what's going on along with Stephanie McMahon. This goes downhill very quickly through some stupid shenanigans. Let's just go through the highlights. Um, Bree slaps the shit out of Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon retaliates. People get arrested. All the stupid shit happens. SummerSlam 2014. Stephanie McMahon versus Brie Bella. Okay, here, here's, here's a lovely little match. Um, what ends up happening is that Brie comes this close to winning. But Nikki Bella betrays her. Oh, oh, okay. And then to top it all off, Nikki Bella all of a sudden absolutely hates and despises Brie Bella. They go on a feud that people are still saying is one of the worst things out of the Divas division. I would say, no, we've seen a lot worse. I but wish you died in the womb. Dear fucking God, this is like terrible acting to the nth degree, especially on Nikki's part. You're no. going to have a rivalry that centers around all of these like feeling or heavy, heavy feelings of like familial betrayal and like wishing that your twin died in the womb next to you. Very PG, I might add. So PG. Oh, the most PG. It really, really helps if you have actresses to do this who can act their way out of a paper fucking bag. Oh, These... no, Brie, Brie, guess what? Brian cheated on you with the therapist. Oh, no, let's bring Jerry Springer into this BTW. When you bring Jerry Springer in to settle a dispute, you know that you have hit rock fucking bottom. Jerry fucking Springer has his own little show on the WWE Network. What the fuck? fuck is jerry springer doing on the wwe network by the way did that whole um uh did that therapist who cheated on daniel bryan do 
a goddamn thing after that? No. Absolutely Did she appear nothing. one more time on the show after that? Nope. Huh, well, uh, glad to see that the WWE is continuing their long-running stance of excellent female storytelling. And then it led up to a match between the two of them, which Nikki pretty much easily won. Now, I bash on Nikki and Brie a lot, but I have to say Nikki's skills have gotten a little better. Brie's have also not. gotten a little bit better, I guess. Not, not Brie really. mode! Stop it. You know what? I take it back. It's gone terrible. Awful. Come on, Nikki! <laughs> okay. I take I take it back. One of that the is what hell feels like. Being in a match <laughs> with Bree on your side saying, Come on! Come on! That's what it sounds. That's what hell is. I hate everything right now. <laughs> now, when it I've... comes to this angle, we haven't mentioned a payoff yet, so... Where's yeah, the payoff? This, vi this video is all about the worst payoffs. Toon, what was the payoff for this angle? Okay, so they keep going at each other. All hell breaks loose. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're best friends. All of a sudden, everything's fine. All of a sudden, the rivalry is fucking dropped like the baby of Kim Kardashian that just goes splat on the floor. It's what? just, it's dropped, it's done. The it's baby of with. Kim Kardashian? That is, Fucking, I that don't. is, whoa. This just got weirdly dark, and I don't whoa. know where to respond with that. Are we seriously joking about baby killing? <laughs> you see how bad this feud is? We haven't even really we didn't, got past the first one. Did, when did Snitsky get fucking involved with this? <laughs> Holy shit. Kick the goddamn baby. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. Toon isn't exaggerating, though. This feud <laughs> was, this feud was dropped like a, it was dropped like a sack of potatoes, like like a bag of groceries that was too heavy. It gets worse and worse every week. It feels like it's driving a knife right into your back. You really don't want to do anything when you see them on the screen. That's your commercial break. That's your pee break. And then all of a fucking sudden you discover, hey, guess what? It was done. The feud's over. Yeah, friends, it, 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 it was, was all a ploy. It was, it was, we, you have been tricked. You have been lied to. It, in fact, was not real. It, in fact, never fucking happened. Let's just pretend it was that way. God, I fucking hate this feud. And, and here's the thing it was like, it was just getting at its most like personal feeling. But like the reason, the whole reason that the WWE decided out of nowhere to just drop the thing was because it was going so shittily and absolutely nobody thought that this was a good feud. But at the same time, just dropping it and having absolutely nothing come of it, like that, that makes it a thousand times worse. Because like if let's say those two were to have one final match at, I don't know, the Royal Rumble or something just to settle the score forever and like Brie wins that. Then you can at least walk away from this rivalry and go, you know what? The destiny or the journey was a total train wreck, but at least something came out of it and at least Brie got a nice moment. But no, there were no nice moments. There was absolutely fucking nothing to, that you could pull from this thing. It was just the absolute fucking drizzling shits. It was the it was awful. You want to know what we did get out of this? We did get Brie being Nikki's like personal assistant for like a month and having those segments going absolutely fucking nowhere. You're, you're right. It would have been nice maybe if there had been maybe a face turn or maybe they had done something a little different or maybe Brie got her revenge and maybe Brie goes off on her own. Whoopty fucking do. Maybe Nikki leaves or maybe they permanently split up and one of them maybe goes on to get rid of the whole twin gimmick and perhaps improve her wrestling skills. One can only hope, but that's sure as hell what we didn't fucking get. I'm actually legitimately pissed. You this, should be. This, it, it was, this video is going to kill us. It's one of the worst <laughs> things that the WWE has done in the last half decade. We understand that when it comes to wrestling, you can be feuding with someone in September, and then you're teaming up next February. It's a nature of wrestling business, the way swerves and face and heel turns and relationships and rivalries work. That's just how it is. But you don't end something that quickly... And that bad without any kind of lasting resolution. It was over it was over and done with in a 30-second match that involved AJ Lee. They were feuding, and then all of a sudden they were not. 
Why? Because. There were reasons for it, but there weren't like storyline reasons. The reasons was because it was awful and everybody hated it. But as part of the actual storyline, one week Brie visibly hates Nikki and the next week she's raising her hand in victory. It, it's And it, it's still like this. Uh, Nikki is still the dominant twin of the bunch and uh, Brie is still kind of just there. And what are we getting now? We're getting something between them and Naomi and Tamina. And apparently the Bellas are faces now. What the fuck is going on? Okay, to be fair, having them fight uh, Naomi and Tamina is actually not terrible. Because Naomi and Tamina are really good. And can be like a really good dominant heel diva faction. Which I don't think we've ever really had. What do you mean we haven't had a dumb... Okay. The Bellas do not count. No, Beth Phoenix and Natalia, when they were a team together, they were kicking the shit out of Lay Cool. And Lay Cool was another good example. Lay Cool were on fucking top for a while. Yeah, I don't really... Never forget Lay Cool and and all their other shenanigans they did. Never forget Beth Phoenix and Natalia as a team. We haven't had one in a while. We haven't had one since Beth was hanging around and Mick... Cool is hanging around and Layla was decent at wrestling. Can we just have Lay Cool come back and be like no, the better no, we snarkier cannot. bitchy team? No, we cannot because Layla is terrible at wrestling now. Sorry, I just crushed <laughs> your hopes and dreams, but no, we cannot. Never mind then. <laughs> Next up. Oh God, can we get to okay, how are we going to worse? Are we going to worser? <laughs> Worsest. Worsest. Uh, oh God, we're going down further. Okay. Yeah, if the Bellas is the sixth worst one that we're doing. <laughs> Kill me. Okay, so a while back, they decided to have a storyline involving Vince McMahon having an illegitimate son. Nope. I don't know if I want to do this. No, <laughs> I know exactly what you're fucking talking about. I ain't want to do this one either. Uh, uh, this video is going to give us all like triple heart attacks at the same time because our hearts are just like, fuck you, people, we're done. God, there were the, everything was good. wrong with this angle. Where do we? Uh, where uh, oh. Nikki and uh, Nikki? I know you care a lot about Hornswoggle, probably for all the wrong reasons. I Speak, do. I mean, we haven't even. I haven't seen Hornswoggle on TV in like a year. And it's and weirdly enough, wrestling is starting to get better. Hmm. <laughs> Nikki, where it's do we start with horn, this? It's everything is Hornswoggle's fault. But anyway, um. Okay, so. Well, the biggest reason why this was doomed to fail from the start is because the original person that they had to be the illegitimate son was supposed to be Mr. Kennedy. And from there, you could make it, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, Mr. Mr. Kennedy, you know, Kennedy is McMahon's middle name. It, it doesn't really work when it comes to like naming actual children, but it makes sense on a contextual scale. And. On top of that, it would be a nice push for Kennedy because, you know, Kennedy was good and all. But apparently, uh, I can't remember if he got injured or he got suspended. But no, no, it's actually worse than that. Kennedy was perfectly fine. The reason why it was changed to the other one is because... You already said his name. You don't have to... Fine, it was changed to Hornswoggle. Fuck it. The reason why (laughs) it was changed to Hornswoggle is because the entire plot line or specifically the big reveal, was was leaked onto the internet, and Vince McMahon decided to show that gosh darn internet a, a lesson and switched it over to Hornswoggle last second. It was always supposed to be Kennedy, but the internet ruined everything. Or specifically... Just, just like everything. Specifically, McMahon's perception of the internet ruined everything. He didn't want his plotline to be stolen because he didn't really recognize at the time the power the internet has when it comes to leaking things. So he decided to to do that instead of just going with it. But can you imagine if it was the other way around? Can you imagine if it was leaked to be Hornswoggle, but it was leaked that way on purpose so everyone would believe it was Hornswoggle, then all of a sudden it's Mr. Kennedy? Imagine oh, if they had the foresight to to plan for that. You give yeah. the writers way too much credit. You give the people behind WWE at that time way That's too much I credit. That's why I said imagine. Hmm, Besides, this, they, they've done this before. They're, they write 
for wrestling. Their entire job is to work us. And if they can't work us, then they are failing at their job. This is the kind of foresight that they need to have. And the internet is a very powerful tool, not just for us to spoil plot lines and get and backstage work. news, but for them to lead us along a path and then all of a sudden throw us down a hill. There was no way they could have turned this around into a good thing. Yeah. Well, like they, they never had the did. Big, they had the big reveal on an episode of Raw, and they got everybody in the ring together at the same time. For some ridiculous reason, they had a series of riddles that would eliminate certain people. What is and this fucking guess who? It was literally guess who? It was like, all right, now get rid of the black people. All right, now get rid of everybody who isn't blonde. Okay, now get rid of all the people who haven't won a world title. Okay, oh, get rid of the people who haven't been arrested yet. Actually, the black people one was an actual thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Never one mind. Of them was, his skin is fair, as is his hair. And then all of the black people left. <laughs> oh, I'm not God. joking. God. And they wonder why they can't attract black people as fans. <laughs> nigga, Dude, nigga, nigga, God. nigga, 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 nigga. I'm 100% nigga. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, Barry, uh, edit out this entire episode. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so finally, the last three guys in the ring, or the last two guys in the ring, rather, were Triple H and Sandman. And you had no idea how much wait, I wanted. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, for, forgive me. Sandman? Sandman! Sandman? You have no idea how much I wanted Sandman to be this guy. Oh my god. Fucking You're... Sand... Oh, go on. Oh, think about it. He was a world champion in ECW. He... Oh, oh, this is even better. He was supposed to actually leave when... He... Uh, one of the clues was to get rid of all the ECW guys. But he was actually drunk off of his ass at that point. So he didn't hear his prompt to leave. So he was just in the ring for no reason. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Doesn't that sound like such a Sandman thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Although, weirdly enough, weirdly enough, that was act there was multiple times when they were this close to putting Sandman in a ridiculous position of power. Like, remember the time that Sandman won a battle royale to become the new Raw general manager only to have R William Regal throw him out of the ring? Can you imagine Raw being run by the fucking Sandman? Well, it was run by Mick Foley for a couple of months, so yes. Yes! <laughs> and it was awesome! So yeah, they eliminate everybody from the ring. It's, it's fucking Hornswoggle. Everybody's like, what? Oh, you missed the best part, though. The last, or Sandman ended up getting eliminated, and it was just Vince and Triple H. Think about how awkward awkward that is. very fucking awkward Wait. it makes it even better dude it makes it even better though when triple h is laughing his ass off at vince though oh when, <laughs> when the big reveal happens and it's hornswoggle and he pops out from under the ring with the cruiserweight fucking championship <laughs> you hand. maniac you fucking killed the championship you bastard so you fucking he's bastard. a uh he, he's the illegitimate son they they hype this up for a little bit and then all of a sudden it's just it's just gone so you have an a very interesting if yet goofy and nonsensical angle that was supposed to result in a cool push for mr kennedy and it goes to hornswoggle instead because the big reveal was leaked and vince mcmahon got angry and then it was just gone you know what this did lead to though this did lead to something from what i recall didn't it lead to a match between finley and jbl at wrestlemania oh shit that was cool is yeah, speaking of Finley, who I miss Finley. Finley is actually working for WWE right now. I forget what position he is, but I, I meant know like Finley. wrestling though. When Finley was around, Finley was like, okay, we have Sheamus, but back then we had Finley. Can you imagine if Finley came back and had a match with Sheamus or something? Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, Finley, Finley, yeah <sighs> this Finley this is a payoff him. that's just exhausting, really exhausting. Uh, let's talk about something worse. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's talk about something worse. All Cal right, you want to you have you want to talk about big reveals? All right, this is probably one of the biggest reveals ever that led to nothing from the very beginning. It all starts in the year 1990. Oh no, the greatest year in wrestling history. Now, 
I'm just going to let that silence sink in so that way those of you that are watching that already know what I'm talking about can get your groans out of the way. I'm, there there happens to be a cart wheeled out into the WWE auditoriums during their shows with a gigantic nest and an egg in it. Oh, a no. Really large, Hell, no. <laughs> a really large egg. And oh, people God. are wondering what this is all about, because anything could be in that egg. This is this is wrestling. Anything can happen. So they is... keep going, they keep going, and then they announce that the egg is set to hatch at Survivor Series 1990. Mm. You um have the egg starting to crack, and it keeps cracking, and Gene Okerlund is like, oh, it's cracking, what's in it? And you have uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper and... I think it may have been uh, Bami Heenan on uh, commentary. It was either him or Jesse Ventura. Uh, and they're hyping up the egg. They're hyping up the egg. And then out pops the gobbledy fucking gooker. Uh... There are so, so many th reasons to know way, way ahead of time that this was the fucking stupidest thing in the world. First off, that name sounds like it was made by a 18 month old infant randomly the costume just... the fucking costume <laughs> i knew you were gonna go straight for the costume the, the costume fucking costume it looked like the jack swagger victory eagle thing on crack <laughs> on crack okay remember the fucking eagle the oh, fucking eagle we're is bringing, more We're bringing back this. so many repressed memories. <laughs> oh, God. The... At least the Jack Swagger victory eagle thing was hilarious, and it didn't try to do anything. It was Remember there to Jack get it. Jack Swagger was champion. <laughs> oh, now you're now you're ripping up all of the scabs. Now you're just now you're just trying to hurt. Oh, Ladies Jack and gentlemen, Swagger. Zach has lost it, and here I thought that was my job. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the gobbledygooker comes out of the egg and he acts like a chicken and shit and he goes to the ring and Roddy Piper the whole time is trying to fucking uh, sell this thing like it's a giant chicken it's a gobbledygooker it's freaking it's the fucking greatest thing ever and I'm gonna do a line of cocaine now <laughs> so he's trying so fucking hard to sell this thing but everybody Good, knew Everybody knew that it was a pile of bullshit. Piper knew. Okerlin knew. Uh, the guy in the costume, whom I don't even know who it was, knew. I, I bet he turned into somebody famous. How much you want to bet that that was fucking, like, I don't know, John Cena in that go costume, and nobody ever talks about it. John Cena was, like, 10. <laughs> John Cena. 10-year-old John Cena in the costume. <laughs> Would but... The thing is, is, it's so hard to explain. Vince McMahon has had a lot of great ideas, but there's no question that he's had a lot of stinkers. And of those ideas, this is one of those ideas that the instant it, it was come up with should have been thrown away in the trash, put in the dump truck, brought to the dump, compressed into a trash compactor, and n never remembered. Just clear it from your mind. But the fact that they have the, the the balls to go through with it is probably the best part of this whole thing. The fact that it happened. The fact that people paid real money to watch this. <laughs> people Can you imagine paid if this money today? for this. Can you imagine if they did this today? Mm. <laughs> okay, I just I looked up who was in the costume. It was a fucking Guerrero. What? Which Guerrero? Juventude? Hector. Hector Guerrero. Holy shit! Are you serious? Son of Gory, brother of Chavo Sr. and Eddie, uncle of Chavo Jr. Oh my. They God. put a Guerrero in a chicken costume. Ladies and gentlemen, the WWE in the early '90s. I don't know what you could describe this as, other than the greatest thing ever. I'm, I, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't even fucking need to continue with this shit. I am so fucking done with this shit. You don't even fucking know. I'm done too. I I, I'm out. This is this is ridiculous. I I can't stand this anymore. This is the dumbest fucking shit in the world. Count, because I already did the walking out of the room thing. You, you, like, <laughs> we're 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 beating it into the ground at this point.
I think he yeah. actually left. <laughs> is it just you and me now? Because I'll be honest. Because I'll, I'll be honest. I kind of faked the whole leaving thing. Like, tacos. Hi. Okay. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh. Th- oh this is God. one of those payoffs, though. That's not. It. It, it doesn't. It's cringeworthy, but it's, oh, it's really. Very it's really fun to look back at and just and just. <clears throat> Think about what was running through the minds of these people for them to take a Guerrero, dress him in a chicken and have him do somersaults in the ring while Roddy Piper goes, this is a gobbledygooker. I'm going to start sniffing glue now. Uh, th- uh, I keep saying this video is going to fucking end this. Like, I, how, how the fuck? Like, I know that the excuse is, oh, it's wrestling. Anything can happen. Like, anything, though? Fucking anything? Yes, anything. And the next three examples are going to show you why. Tune, you're next. Huh, okay. So who here remembers the Nexus? Yeah, I remember. Fuck! God! No! (laughs) Man, remember how excited we were when the Nexus had its debut? How they were running wild? How we thought the Nexus was, like, the coolest shit ever? They were the new NWO. And it was the perfect time to do it because it was 2010, and uh, most, if not all, of the kids watching never knew what the NWO was. I, they hadn't been a thing since, like, late 2002. So they had no knowledge of the NWO. So it was the perfect time to bring in another NWO. That was the Nexus. But over the next three weeks, we have a buildup between Team WWE and... Team Nexus, I'll Tune, explain. Explain, I'll explain what happened. Okay, so this happened around, I think, June 7th in 2010. That's when they first made their debut. They were doing a pretty good job of running wild, and they bumped into Cena, of fucking course, like right off the bat. So Cena decides, oh, shit, I'm out of my element. I better start assembling a team. So uh, he manages to assemble a team for SummerSlam. And here we are thinking, okay, Nexus is just going to drive them into the ground. It's all over. New faction, everything. Okay, never mind. Cena and his team just absolutely fucking destroy them. No, no. I need to clarify. You said Cena and his team completely destroy the Nexus, yeah? Okay, let me rephrase. Cena did it. All Super Cena. This is Super Cena booking at its worst. We complain about Super Cena booking, but I am grateful that in the last year of watching the program, it has never been this bad. It was basically a two-on-seven handicap match. It It was John Cena... And with a little bit of help from Daniel Bryan, which admittedly was a cool uh, announcement that he returned. That was that was all right. That was cool. Good job on that part. But it was basically you had like Bret Hart, who didn't do much. You had, I believe, our truth, I think Jericho, Edge, John Morrison, John Morrison. Miz was supposed to be in there. But then Daniel Bryan's like, ha, lol, no. Yeah. uh, you okay? So yeah, Daniel Bryan, Cena, Edge, Jericho, Hart, Morrison. There was one more because it was seven v seven. Truth, our okay. truth. Yep. And yeah. basically, all of that team was irrelevant except for you know who. Yeah. yeah. The thing is with the Nexus is that while it started out good, it got flattened really before it had the chance to shine. And while Wade Barrett did his best to try and make it relevant, even going so far as to like get into the feud with Cena where he had Cena joining the Nexus, that didn't work either. I'll just say this. The Nexus's original run ran from June 7th, 2010 to TLC. They didn't even make it past the year. They were defeated. And then, of course, we all know what happened. Punk tried to bring life into it with the new Nexus. That didn't work either. And the Nexus just fucking died. And on top of that, pretty much everybody that came out of the Nexus ended up becoming totally fucking irrelevant. Barrett and Skip Sheffield, who became Ryback, are it. Are the only ones who resemble anywhere near a success story that came out of the Nexus. Yeah. Sans, Sans Daniel Bryan. Yeah. 
Well, you have yeah, skipped... I, that was in the yeah. seven on seven match at SummerSlam. Uh, Justin Gabriel was a jobber and then left. Heath Slater is still a jobber. David Otunga has been missing for like a year. Michael Tarver, I, what the fuck did Michael Tarver do? Not a goddamn thing. And Darren Young is in the primetime players, and he's occasionally hilarious, but like that's probably not going to go anywhere either. Also, he's gay. That went over for a while and apparently gave him a little bit of a oh, yeah. push, but then oh, that yeah. also yeah, he's, deflated. He's the, he's the gay one. That's, that's, woo. Well, I like I like the way WWE is handling it because they're not changing his gimmick. They're not forcing it down his our throats. The only thing they're doing to really relate to it is small little in jokes that people Ring. that are aware of it they're Ring funny. Is my favorite color. Yeah, see, it's shit like that. It's handled very very well by the WWE. So props to them for not turning it into a neo political bullshit kind of bullshit. Like props to them for not doing that. And yeah. now we go back to the bullshit, because when it comes to Cena destroying the Nexus almost single-handedly, this was not the fault of the Bookers. The Bookers actually wanted the Nexus to win. But you have Cena, a guy with a lot of power, who likes to use his power to help get other people over, and is usually fighting the Bookers to try and get other people over, and he knows it's stupid, but he's a company man, and he needs to do his job. Sometimes it's successful with people like Edge, with people like Daniel Bryan. Uh, but this time was different. Cena refused to lose to the Nexus. Not only did he refuse to lose to the Nexus, he wanted to destroy the Nexus single-handedly. And when Cena was actually uh, removed from WWE kayfabe-wise and said, oh, I've, been, I've been here for eight years, it's been a pleasure serving you all, but I must go now. And then he comes I back week after me. week after week to take out a Nexus member backstage and it's very clear that WWE was not willing to take Cena off of their television screens for even just a few months. And they needed Cena on programming every single time. That was the state of the WWE in 2010. And SummerSlam 2010 with Team WWE versus Team Nexus is the perfect example of Super Cena booking. It is also its worst example and belongs on this list as one of the worst payoffs ever. When I look at the Nexus, they did have a pretty good start. And just, and I don't think they were ever really able to recover after they got flattened. You know, it's just nothing was ever really the same. Yeah, sure, they got the tag titles. Yeah, they came pretty close to, like, main eventing. Yeah, they came, they got Cena over in a pretty decent feud. But other than that, they really just ended up falling flat. It could have been the next NWO. Hey, at least later on we got the shield, and the shield showed us probably how to do a great faction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shield. I'm also reminded, uh, we got the core out of it. Oh, God, we don't speak of the core. The core was one of the stupidest things that Wade Barrett's done. Other than changing his theme song multiple times, other than changing his finishers multiple times, other than changing just about everything about him, fucking... <laughs> Other than uh, not doing the fucking, oh, I've got some bad news. Man, I like, kind of miss that now. I miss that. We all do. I mean, the guy should be a face right now. He's still delivering bad news. But if no. If anything. Wait, how did that work? What do you mean? Like a face delivering the bad news and really embellishing it and really enjoying it? Why not? The Rock was able to flip between face and heel without changing a little bit of his character. If we look at it from a good perspective, we did the Nexus did give us and introduce us to likes of Ryback, the likes of Daniel Bryan, the likes of Wade Barrett, the likes of Curtis Axel, the likes of of um did I say Bray Wyatt already? No, you didn't. No. Okay, Bray Wyatt and Darren Young, and I think later on, um, I guess Titus O'Neil, maybe. I don't know. Titus they gave O'Neil us some good there. people out of it, so it's not like it was a total loss, but. Just focusing on how they were flattened and they weren't able to recover from then. That's the Nexus in a nutshell. Yeah. Next thing. Let's talk about how the WWE constantly kicks the shit out of WCW and ECW. Yes, and let's keep mentioning that over and over and over and have that really shitty sting match to like just rub the more salt in the wound. Hey, WWE fans, do you remember the, the Monday Night Wars? The Monday Night Wars were fun, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they were, uh, Mr. McMahon. They were fun back in 2000. 
back when the WWE was actually kick cranking out some of its best material ever. Thank you for that. But um the WWE constantly feels like it needs to remind us, hey, the WWE, we won. We we beat WCW DCW. And they did so when like right right after 01 when WCW and ECW closed their doors and the WWE was able to acquire a shitload of their talent, but not the big stars. Like they were able to get some good ones. They got Booker T to come over. They got the Radicals to come over. They got Van Dam to come over. They couldn't and, get Flair or Nash or Hall or Sting or Hogan, etc. Not Goldberg. until much later, though. They or go, get, fucking Goldberg, no. Yeah. But they still decided that it would be a wonderful idea to have the few guys that they had come over from WCW and then later ECW to come over and try an invasion angle. The fucking invasion angle. And right from the beginning, you could tell that it was a terrible idea because, yes, you had Booker. Yes, you had Van Dam, But the problem with that is, like, you have those guys who were, like, middle of the card in WCW and ECW. And you're having them compete against the biggest stars in the company. Because that was, like, supposed to be the main event rivalry. And in a weird sort of way, having the WCW guys like the middle of the WCW and ECW card, like going toe to toe with the uh, the big dogs in the WWE almost kind of went against what it was trying to accomplish, which is kind of weird if you think about it. But it it was supposed to end up culminating in a Survivor Series or traditional Survivor Series five on five elimination match. Is this the one with Stone Cold? Like where oh, he, yes. um... I, I forgot about Stone Cold. You see, at that point, Stone Cold decided that he was going to lead the invasion because reasons. Because, like, I think that that was the right after the WrestleMania where he turned heel and aligned himself with the with McMahon, and he was on their side. And then oh, just out stupid. of nowhere, um, yeah. Now he's now he's against the McMahons again. Still heel, by the way. At that point, now the McMahons are faces for some reason. And um, yeah, now he's leading the uh, invasion and trying to be a heel at the same time, which let's face it, Stone Cold really does not do heel. Like he does anti-hero. He does anti-hero like a fucking boss. Can't do heel. What? Serious. I said he uh, can't do heel. What? Oh, God. Uh, hey, uh, WWE fans, uh, quick tangent. What? Um, can we <laughs> end the what thing forever? What? Because every time what? somebody comes out and tries to give a heartfelt speech what? and say something really important. What? Every time what? the crowd is filled to bursting what? with a bunch what? of assholes who what? thought they're being really fucking cute what? by spouting that what bullshit what? that was that got boring back in 2001. What? what? I hate you. What? Okay, I'm what? done Loser now. Says, Loser says what? <laughs> Say Fuck what you. if you sleep with your sister. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the one good thing that came out of that. That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was fun. <laughs> but everything else was the worst. The invasion <laughs> angle was one of those angles where... By the way, good timing on that, guys. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, the angle was one of those things where they didn't really have much of a choice because they had acquired so much talent in such a short time span that they needed a way to f to put them all in the show. So they kept having all of these crowd fights and run-ins and all of this crazy shit. And it was only until Stone Cold pinned The Rock and ECW, WCW lost that they could begin to liquidate their roster and then bring in some more of the big guns over time. They didn't really have much of a choice. And unfortunately, this angle was never going to have a good payoff. In fact, arguably, it had no payoff. Here is your illustrious team on Team Alliance. I hope you're ready for this because this is fucking incredible. Stone Cold, Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon, 
Van Dam, and Booker. You had one, count them, one guy who was on the WCW roster when it folded and one guy from the ECW roster as part of the WCW ECW Alliance. Beautiful. That's amazing. Like, holy shit. Holy shit. All the holy shit. Why did they think that this was a thing that was worth salvaging? They wanted to make it work. They wanted to make it work really, really bad, but unfortunately, it was going nowhere from the very beginning. It was like it was like a five year old kid that runs around in circles for fun. There, there's no direction, and I don't. It, oh, they don't he, care where the, they're going. Here's the fun thing, like they had um basically the whole card of Survivor Series 01 was kind of built around this whole uh WCW versus or WWF versus WCW or versus Alliance kind of deal. And they they gave the Alliance like a couple of wins that don't mean a goddamn thing. They had like Lance Storm, Just Incredible, and Raven beat Albert, Scotty Duhati, and Spike Dudley in a six man tag. Woo! Get hyped. They had the Dudleys beat the Hardys. That that was all right to unify the uh, tag titles. But the big ones that mattered, the title unification for the United States and Intercontinental title that went to the WWF. The uh, the the six pack women's challenge between uh, three of the divas from WWF and three of the divas from the W from the Alliance that went to the WWF like the the ones that didn't matter. Like, sure, they gave it to the Alliance, but the ones that did, the ones that meant something going forward, those went to the WWF just to drive that nail home. Yeah, the uh, the WCW guys like they, they they're fine like but when it comes to actually stuff that's important when it comes to titles when it comes to actually doing something in the wwe it's always going to end wwe's way and never ever 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 go the wcw way thankfully they kind of learned that uh, to fix that lesson by 2004 when um uh, wrestlemania 20 happened and we talked about how the two big uh WCW alum eventually won the titles from the WWE lifers but still at this point it was just a way like the whole invasion thing was just a thing to make you go yeah the WWF rules and WCW drools that's basically the extent of it yay woo go WWE we are the champions yay fantastic now Let's finish this. How much worse can we get? I think we hit the bottom. I don't know how much further we can go. Oh, uh, I'm, I don't setting know. The over, I'm setting the over under at number of haymakers who commit seppuku by the end of this video at one half of one. Who, what are we going with? <laughs> well, we're going, going with over. we're going with this. Let's take you back to the Monday Night Wars. Right we were as they just were, there. <laughs> now, ah, 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 we were right after the Monday Night Wars. Right now, we're going to about five years before that, um, right when they were getting into full swing. You have Bash at the Beach 1996. Hogan does the unthinkable, turns heel, and forms the new world order of wrestling, brother. World order. Yep. The very next day, WCW's Monday Nitro beats Monday Night Raw in the ratings for the first time, starting an 86-week winning streak. This is because the NWO was the hottest property in wrestling ever up to that point. And they went along and just started harassing and annoying and beating the shit out of the entire roster. The Giant joined their ranks. Randy Savage joined their ranks. Ted DiBiase joined their ranks. Eric Bischoff joined their ranks. If you didn't join the NWO, well then you're fucked. But in the fall of 1996, there emerged a warrior. One man who could single-handedly take out the NWO. One man that could fix the roster. That could separate the terrible, terrible axis of evil that is the New World Order. And one man that could set everything right. And that man was Sting. Sting left the WCW in 1996. Kayfabe. He re-emerged during a Hogan match on Monday Nitro. In the rafters, with crow makeup, 
And as a matter of fact, that makeup was huge because for the longest time, people didn't know whether he was preparing to join the NWO or fight against them. So what he would do was he would do little interferences in the matches where he would uh, rescue an NWO guy and then he'd rescue a non-NWO guy. Eventually, it was confirmed that he was against the NWO and he started showing up at random places backstage, on the rafters, in the crowd, during fucking press conferences. He would just show up, put out his baseball bat, and leave without saying a word. They are set to face off at Starcade 1997 in the wrestling match to end all wrestling matches. The match that will determine the fate of the Monday Night Wars and send WCW skyrocketing to prominence, leaving the WWE in ruins at their feet. Nothing could have gone wrong. Well, as we were proven by that match, not only could something go wrong, but everything could go wrong. Oh, boy. Mm. I'm getting my car keys and I'm killing myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's dead. We're going to plan the funeral for um, next Wednesday. So okay. uh, what happened was <laughs> Hogan decided to be an asshole. The end. Goodbye. Hogan did not want to lose to Sting. At least, oh. he didn't want to lose to Sting in the proper way. He, he wanted to go in a match with Sting for 10 minutes, and he wanted the ref to do a fast count. And it was a referee uh, that, was, uh, that had already been confirmed for helping the NWO, so it makes sense to do this. And then Bret Hart would come in, because he had just recently... Uh, transferred over to WCW after the uh, the Montreal Screwjob, and then he would come in and order the match be restarted. Never mind the fact that this makes no sense because Bret Hart is in no position of power, so why the fuck is he doing this? But whatever, the match would restart, and then Hogan would tap to the death lock, and everybody would raise Sting's uh, sting above his shoulders. Now, if that sounds stupid to you, especially when I add that Hogan in that first 10 minute section was going to get like 80% worth of the offense. Well, it was kind of stupid, but it was made worse by the fact that the referee botched his count. He counted normally one, two, three, he was supposed to do a fast count, but it was normal, so everybody was stunned from the fact that Hulk Hogan was supposed to, was, was actually winning. And then Bret Hart comes down, restarts the match, and everybody's confused. Nobody knows what's going on. But because of that botch, they had to include it into a future angle, so Hogan and Sting would have a rematch, and Sting would retain the title. This whole thing was a mess. This was supposed to cement WCW's future as the number one federation in professional wrestling. That didn't happen. But it should have. This should have been the moment that finalized everything. That put the writing on the ground. The one that was supposed to launch the satellite to broadcast WCW to aliens all across the galaxy. But that never happened. Because Hogan is an asshole. Or at least was an asshole because right now he's vid visiting sick kids in the hospital without press and without notification he just goes up to them signs an autograph says hello talks to them for five minutes and leaves with no warning that is pretty cool but back then hogan was an asshole make no mistake about it okay russo sorry if i'm still alive okay so yeah and, and here's the thing like hogan absolutely just shot down the idea of him losing cleanly to Sting. And that that's basic wrestling storytelling 101. If you're going to have a big payoff, if you're going to have something go really, really huge over, the face has to beat the heel cleanly. You can look at any big moment in, w, or in wrestling history where you're looking for a huge moment where the baby face goes over like a fucking champ. Daniel Bryan winning at WrestleMania 30. Benoit winning at WrestleMania 20. The Cyclope Battle Royale. You look for a moment where the crowd absolutely falls in love and you're looking for a moment where the face beats the heel. And, like, in this, not only did the heel beat the face cleanly, but then... Yeah, you have the bizarre, just 
oh, yeah, apparently the match is back on for no reason. And then the and then the face pin, pins the heel cl- kind of clean. Like, OK, this, this is going this is being a bang up. Job. Oh, and by the way, one of the other big problems with this was that there was in, if they wanted to make this really good, if they wanted to make this like supposed to hype this as the biggest thing ever, they should have had the NWO coming into Starcade 97 with an unblemished record. But they didn't. Lex Luger got a clean win and won the WCW world title from Hogan. At least I think that's how I know Luger beat and pinned and pretty much wiped out the NWO. And we were just supposed to go, nope, nope, never happened. Luger didn't do shit. The WCW, a lot of the time, really, really seemed like they didn't know how to write for human beings. Like, it it felt like they were a bunch of aliens who had heard about how basic human emotions work, but didn't quite have the grasp of it just yet. Viagra on a pole match. Thank you very much for proving that. I wish I had more to say about this match other than what you guys are talking about. A lot of things in WCW (laughs) I ended up missing. So it's interesting to hear how all that. Well, that's just went it. Down. All of this shit is recorded on the internet and on the network. Just read some articles, watch some videos. Come watch on, that dude. Monday Night Wars thing is fun. It's all there. Don't be lazy. To be fair, seeing how much this is killing us all, we're really not selling the idea of him watching this very well. Like, yeah, it, and it kind of sucks, I guess, for Sting. For that's another thing. Um, if we're talking about um, worse payoffs, since we are talking about Sting, can we at least mention when Sting came back? How and- awesome was that debut, though? It was awesome, but what did it lead to? It led to WrestleMania, where Triple H won. It led to Dolph Ziggler having a really cool moment. It led to... <laughs> <laughs> it led to Sting else. getting fucking buried into the ground. I I wouldn't say buried. Like we don't know what his fate is right now. So until we do know his fate, then he's not buried. Once we do, then maybe he's buried. But uh, honestly, at WrestleMania 30, when Shawn Michaels landed a sweet chin music, I think that's the only time that Shawn Michaels has ever been booed as a face in, <laughs> in since the 90s. I actually have been watching a little bit of this. I looked up what you guys were talking about. All I can really say on it is, yeah, goddamn, Hogan is an asshole. This can never be stated enough. Like, I've actually presented the question to people, is Hulk Hogan the greatest thing to ever happen, or closer to being the greatest thing to ever happen to professional wrestling, or the worst thing to happen to professional wrestling? I would say... Okay, I would, say, I would say the worst because there were many people that could have filled Hogan's shoes in the 80s. There was Jimmy Superfly Schnooka. Uh, there was um, Randy Savage. There was Randy Savage. There was Ricky Steamboat, although less likely because he's Asian. But um, there, there were there were there were candidates. If you look at that roster, if they were willing to change the gimmick and give him a Hulk Hogan kind of thing, because remember Andre the Giant. Uh, before WrestleMania three was more over than Hogan. You can't forget that. And Hulk Hogan's ego stopped Jesse Ventura from uh, Jesse Ventura from being able to form a wrestlers union. Uh, he stopped a lot of booking plans. Like for example, in 1991, they didn't really know who they wanted to win the Royal Rumble. So Hogan. Oh, actually, it was supposed to be uh, Kurt Henning. Kurt Henning was supposed to win the Royal Rumble in 1991. But then Hogan said, no, I want to win the Royal Rumble again while I'm still champion. And so it happened. Yes, remember that. In 1991, Hulk Hogan won the Royal Rumble while he was fucking champion. I'm a real American. And the person that was supposed to win was Kurt Fucking Henning. You uh, you okay there? I think I'm losing it now. <laughs> all right, everybody, like, favorite, subscribe, put all we're of your money in our Patreon. So we we're can... gonna go. Ha- we're gonna go have a vomit party. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. We're, we're gonna have better than that. We're gonna go get. Okay, look, all of you guys, put in about a thousand dollars in our Patreon. We're gonna go buy some hookers and blow. Let's go.
Yeah, we need a break from this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hookers! And blow!